Okay, so the rear spar uh, is assembled, except for uh, the lower, uh, the bottom hinge bracket, which uh, comes later. It's time to rivet basically the top half, two thirds, however you want to count it, of the skeleton together. Uh, you leave these Clico together until you're putting the skin on so that you can take parts out, get up in here, um, and then put them back, and then these these last few, uh, these last rivets, uh, the, the, the last pieces of the skeleton are riveted on, I guess right before you do the, the bottom of the skin, but these, so it's basically 11 rivets, 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, so they're Universal head, 470, uh, 84-4s, so one-eighth rivets, and uh, let's see, I've got to get this guy dialed in for this thickness, and yeah, I don't know that uh, the plans don't necessarily specify a direction, you know, like should the rivet go in like this? like this and I can't imagine why it should matter uh, in this case I'll probably you know for these that are going through the spar web I'll put them through the same way all the other you know rivets in the spar web went um, these top ones I guess I'll go down uh, these up here don't know that it matters I guess I'll probably go in like that just sort of stay consistent with I don't know that's what I'll do so uh, here we go. All right, a couple of quick comments here. Uh, I found that there were a couple of holes that, you know, after I had primed them, the holes were too tight uh, to put the rivet through easily, so I did clean them out with a reamer, just twisted in my fingers. That's all it really took to get the hole cleaned out. Uh, so you may see me do that a couple of times here. Also, uh, I started second-guessing my decision on the direction of the rivets, uh, the direction I put the rivets through uh, between the top rib and the rear spar. So after I did the first rivet, I started thinking, boy, this would have been, if I needed to drill these out, it would have been easier if I had the manufactured head on the back side of the spar. Uh, I didn't need to drill them out, so it didn't, wasn't an issue, but I, it became really important to me because of that uh, to, to make sure the manufactured head was on the top, um, you know, the top of the top rib there on the, on the rivets that come down through the top rib and into the front spar. And I really fretted with trying to get the squeezer set up to do that. Okay, probably overthinking this. I can put the rivet in from the bottom. But, as you can see, I ended up putting the rivet in from the bottom, uh, manufactured head on the bottom, shop head on the top, everything was fine, didn't need to drill them out, which I hadn't even put that much worry into, you know, trying to do it the other way. So you can see that the order that I put all these parts together in was that I riveted the top rib to the rear spar first, then I riveted the top rib to the front spar, then I riveted the middle end spar rib to the rear spar, and the last step, the last connection I made was, that, was to rivet the middle end spar and nose ribs to the front spar. Now in retrospect, I should have done it in a different order. Uh, I should have at least riveted the nose and middle end spar ribs to the front spar before riveting the end spar, the middle end spar rib to the rear spar. I'll talk about the trouble I ran into uh, at the end of this video, although I don't realize until after I recorded that segment uh, that the real solution would have been, the best solution would have been to have done it in a different order. So yeah, here's where I'm about to run into trouble. I start to realize that uh, it's a lot tighter in there than it looks. 
and I start scratching my head, and uh, luckily the camera battery dies. So, I uh, got the skeleton riveted together. Uh, it's a good thing the camera battery died uh, when it did, because that was right before the real struggle ensued. Um, I didn't think this was going to be difficult. It shouldn't have been difficult. I feel like a whiner even saying it was difficult. It was 11 rivets. How hard can that be, right? So it's basically, you know, this connection, and this, this, and this. These here, uh, you leave just Clecoed. You don't rivet those yet because you need to reach in to get access to rivet the skin. So 11 rivets. How hard? How hard can that be? Um, most of them were fine. It was these three that really turned into a wrestling match. And it doesn't look like they should have been uh, difficult. It doesn't look like it's that tight of quarters. But these ones in the corners uh, up under here, it just the, the squeezer body. So I, I put the, man, the manufactured heads are up here. The shop heads are on the bottom. It might have been better to do them the other way. I, I kind of fiddled around trying both or trying to see which would be better and came to the conclusion, at least at the moment, that it wouldn't have mattered. Um, so uh, basically what would happen is the body of the squeezer, I mean, it, this is really tight right in that corner anyway. That's okay. Uh, but you, you sort of have to wed, shove it in there uh, to get, and so it keeps trying to push off of the of the manufactured head. But the main problem is the body of the squeezer pushes up against this part of the rib. There's just no good way to get in there, you know, without doing that. And it's fine, this is flexible, except that, so I did the middle rivet first, it was okay. Went to do this one, uh, this, this one right here, and it, as I pushed this like this, you know, you can imagine it, it caused a little gap between the flange, you know, the flange of the rib up in there and where it, um, you know, contacts the spar web there. So I did that one. I could tell I, I was going to want to do it over again. And then, so I went ahead and I did this one, uh, and I was better. I did a better job of getting my fingers in there in all the right spots, holding it all together, not getting my finger smashed by that thing. Um, and that one worked out okay. So I drilled this guy out. Of course, that's a frustrating thing because now I'm trying to drill out a rivet, not screw anything up, doing it and dealing with all this. Uh, but I got it drilled out, got uh, and actually did a pretty good job of it. Happened to get right down the center, the, the head popped off uh, without you know boogering up the hole too badly. It was the the body of the rivet was still the shank was still in there pretty tight. I had to use some uh, some pliers and, and whatnot to get side. I got it out, I uh, ended up scraping up my primer a little bit under there, but that's okay. Got it replaced, uh, again, was, was just able to hold everything tight enough uh, the second time around. But it just, you know, I, I, I just spent a lot of time trying to figure out, you know, let me try this way, let me try this way in a minute. What if I put the, the you know, the, the switch the dies around? Uh, just all these different things I tried thinking it can't be this hard. Um, you know, what am I missing? Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and mute myself right there and say it shouldn't have been this hard. And I was still missing something even as I was explaining it here. So as I mentioned in the earlier voiceover, what I should have done was rivet the, the middle end spar and nose ribs to the front spar first, or if not first, I should have at least done it before I riveted the back part of that metal and spar rib to the rear spar. Because if I had done it in that order, then I would have had more freedom to move the metal and spar rib out of the way of the body of the squeezer and still be able to, you know, flex it out of the way and hold the flange of the rib flush up against the back part of the spar web. So, you know, it, it took me this long to figure that out. Uh, right here, as a matter of fact, I'm even still, uh, I'm talking about how maybe if I had a longer yoke, uh, I could have reached across, you know, from one side of the spar to get the, the rib or the rivet in the opposite corner. I do think that would have helped, uh, but the body of the squeezer would have still interfered a little bit with the in-spar rib. And so 
uh, you know, again, the order was what would have made all the difference. And so the lesson here is even if the plans don't talk about an order or don't specify an order, think that through first. So I'll go ahead and let this guy wrap it up. We'll see. Anyway, skeletons together. Uh, the next step is to put on the lower hinge bracket. And after that, it's the skin. So and then I'm done with the vertical stabilizer. So, you know, the easiest part of the plane that will be done. So, getting there.